so, so kind to me. For I spoke a word, you're singing over me. You have been so, so took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Totally overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God.
just lay down every regret. Everything of 2018 that is not of you. We lay those things down before you right now, God. We thank you that we don't have to walk in shame. I do pray for that conviction, God. I pray that you would convict us of our sin. We repent before you right now, God. We just pray that you empower us to live for you this year to change the things that we need to change, God. And that it wouldn't just be a New Year's resolution, but that would be the power of the Holy Spirit within us, God. But we're done. We're done trying to do things in our own strength. It never works. We get too tired. We get too weak. We give in to temptation when we do it in our own strength. So God, we just submit to you right now. We thank you for your reckless love, God. It doesn't mean that you're crazy or anything, but your love endures, that your love, it is, it is amazing, God. And we can't understand it. We don't understand why you would love us, God. Sinners, people who have hurt you, who have broken your heart, but we thank you so much, God, that you love us. Thank you so much that that is the truth.
just saying reckless love that we know that that is a free gift, God. But you had to die for that. And we need to realize that with that gift, that we need to accept that. And we need to accept that free gift of love. And Lord, we just thank you for loving us despite how sinful we are. Lord, help us realize that we are not our own, God. That we were bought with a price, God, when you died for us. God, I pray that you will help us to realize that on our own, we can do nothing. That we are so weak. That so many times this past 2018, I did a lot of things in my own strength and I failed time and time again. But God, thank you for your grace. Thank you that we can just rely on you, God. That we can forever and fully rely on you, God. That you never change. We know that seasons change. We know that people change. We know that people will hurt us. People will leave us, God. But you will never leave. You will never leave us nor forsake us, God. That you're always there to pick us up. And just help us find joy in that, God. Help us find joy that we're just excited to live for you, God. Because we want to be in your presence, God. We want to be in your presence here on earth, but also in heaven, God. We want to hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. God, I pray that you will just help us in this new year, as people as Calvary or Valley, that we will not be so focused on this earth, focused on the materialistic things, the things that we need to get done, the things that we have to do with our house, the comfortable lives, God, that you will just strip that from us right now, God. You will please just find the enemy who wants us to keep us on this earth, to be earthbound, to be focused and so distracted from the things that are in heaven, the eternity, to forget that, oh wait, this is not our home. We're just foreigners, we're just passing through. That God, our home is in heaven with you. That you will help us to just be excited for that. And the only reason we can be excited for that, the only way we can have that assurance of that, is if we're abiding in you, God, in the vine, that we continually fall and fall at your feet, God. We're gonna mess up, we're gonna fall, but we fall forward towards you, God. We just thank you for this day. We pray for your presence, God, to just be so thick in this place, God. Overwhelm us, God. We want this church and this new year to be fresh, new creation, just excited for what you have in store for us, God. We want you, even if that means that you take us home today, God. We want to be with you. If you want us to live here 50 or 80 more years on this earth, God, that we're going to serve you all the days of our life. Amen?
Let's give Lord a clap. Bless you, John. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year again. You guys excited for this year? Yeah. Amen? Yeah? How many of you guys had a rough year 2018? No? A little bit? No. But we're going to have a blessed year in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, we we just got back from Flagstaff, so it was a really, we got to you know, have a little vacation, got to rest with the family, and uh, it was a really good time. We actually got some snow, too, because last year we went to Pine Top and there was no snow. But uh, we got to ski, and it was a good time. But that means that we still have Christmas decorations up. How many of you guys still have Christmas decorations up? Yeah, we still got in here, too. But we learned that, you, you guys know about the 12 days of Christmas, right? And it's not the 12 days leading up to Christmas, but it's starting at Christmas, and it ends on the 5th. So technically, it ended yesterday. So it's okay if you guys still have your Christmas decorations up. You, we'll give you a day grace to take down your Christmas decorations. Someone said um, that their New Year's resolution was to take all their Christmas lights down by Easter. <laughs> it's pretty, wow, that's a pretty big one right there. But I want to read you a couple of these things. One person said, a New Year's resolution is something that goes in one year and out the other. You guys get it? <laughs> if you make a New Year's resolution to eat, eat healthy and you keep it, you won't actually live longer, but it will seem longer. How <laughs> many you guys agree with that? <laughs> no, but another person said, may all your troubles last as long as your New Year's resolutions. <laughs> and then another guy said, I see no need to make no more New Year's resolutions when the ones already on the books aren't being enforced, right? <laughs> but we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today, so we're going to talk about how we can actually live out these things that we want to do and hopefully it's not just things for ourselves, but hopefully it's for the lord amen and then there's another there's a pastor that we saw in flagstaff and uh we saw we went to a couple churches just kind of checking them out and one guy said so there's this woman who sees her husband standing on the on the scale in the bathroom right how many of you guys are trying to lose weight, you don't have to raise your hand, but if you're trying to lose weight, you, you want to check what you weigh now, right, and then see if you have any progress, but this husband was standing on the scale, and he was sucking his stomach in, and then the wife was like, that's not going to help you, you know, and he said, sure it will, it's the only way I'll be able to see the numbers, <laughs> you guys like that, <laughs> all right, well, I pray that you are blessed this new year, and another cool thing about today, can anyone guess it? No? Today is our 17th year anniversary of having, starting the church, my, my dad and my mom. So it's only by the grace and strength of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. And uh, yeah, so the title of today's message is going to be a question today. And that is, are you filled with the Spirit? Are you filled with the Spirit? And why don't you guys turn with, with me to Ephesians, Ephesians 5. I, I was going to say chapter 18. Ephesians 5, 18. Ephesians 5, 18. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of Scripture today. So you guys got to get ready with your notes because I'm, you know, I'm just going to be throwing them out there for you. Last, last time I spoke, we went through a chapter of the Bible. But this time, it's more topical. So are you guys ready for this? All right, well, let's pray, and then we'll get into it. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you so much for what you're doing in our life, God. Uh, and thank you, God, that you've brought us together here in this place, and we want to glorify you. We don't want to be here for any other person or any other thing but you. And so I just pray that you would just purify our hearts, purify our intentions, Take away anything that's not of you, God, and we just pray that we'll be able to accept your message this morning, that we'll be able to take it in with joy, with a passion, that we'll leave this place just even more fired up to live for you and to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I just thank you so much for this opportunity, God, that we get to start this new year with you. And I just pray that we would not do it in our own strength, I just pray that if we already have done it in our own strength these past 
a few days, almost a week. Lord, I pray that we would submit to you, that we would humble ourselves. I just pray that you would anoint my tongue. God, I pray that I won't, uh, I won't lead your people astray. I pray that everything of me will be forgotten. Everything of me would not um, go into your people's hearts, but everything of you, I pray, God, would be filling this place and filling the hearts and the minds of your people. And we thank you, God, that you're so good to us. Thank you for your love like we've been singing about. And I pray, God, that now because you've loved us so greatly that we would love you back and that we would love others back. And we thank you. It's in Jesus' my name I pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 All right, so I want to read this by A.W. Tozer. He said, we may as well face it. The whole level of spirituality among us is low. We have measured ourselves by ourselves until the incentive to seek higher plateaus in the things of the spirit is all but gone. We have imitated the world, sought popular favor, manufactured delights to substitute for the joy of the Lord, and produced a cheap and synthetic power to substitute for the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of you guys can agree with Tozer that we have lost that, you know, that, or that level of spirituality in our lives has been lowered? And we, you know, we compare ourselves to other churches. Like Tozer was saying, we compare ourselves to ourselves or to other lukewarm people, but it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what we need. We can't compare ourselves to other people or, our, or ourselves, but we need to compare ourselves to what the Bible says, right? To what Jesus says. And we've imitated the world. We've even, maybe some of you have celebrated Christmas and said, hey, it's all about Jesus, but a lot of it was for ourselves probably. So I want to ask you, how much of your life is filled with the Spirit? And here's our main verse for this morning, Ephesians 5.18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Amen? Be filled with the Spirit. And, you know, maybe you guys, some of you don't drink and stuff, but my question is, are you seduced by the things of this world? You know, that that could be alcohol, but it could be other things too. It doesn't just have to be that. Are you seduced by those things rather than being overcome by the Holy Spirit of God? And we need that filling of the Spirit again. Amen? Amen? We need that feeling. We need to sober up. We need to pursue the things of God. And 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, and that's the key, his will, right? It can't be our will. Anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. And some of us just don't ask, right? Some of us don't ask, and we need to figure out why. We need to figure out why. Are we scared? Or maybe we're just lazy, you know? Or maybe you are scared. Maybe you're scared of what the Holy Spirit is going to tell you to do, right? How many of you guys have ever been kind of like, oh, man, what if the Holy Spirit sends me across the world, right? And we're like, I'm so comfortable. But one person said, well, if you're so comfortable, then why do you need the comforter, right? And who's the comforter? The Holy Spirit, right? And Francis Chan, um, he was talking about how we need to start asking. You know, we need to start studying the Bible for our own. And, and these Jehovah's Witnesses came to him, and he was in a rush. So this is what he said to them. He said, there's no way you can look me in the eyes and tell me that you sat down one day seeking to find God, read the Bible, and came to the conclusion that Jesus is the same person as Michael the Archangel. He said, no one could come to that conclusion. You only believe it because that's what you were told. And I don't want to stand here and spoon feed you something else. And then he goes on to tell them to seek the Bible, right? Seek the truth of God's word rather than just listening to everything that people have told them. You know, it's not bad to listen to what people say, but we need to check it with the word of God. Amen? Amen? And we need to pray for those people. You know, every time Veli passes by the Mormon temple, she prays for them because there's kids being raised up in the Mormon temple, right, in Mormonism, and being taught these lies. But she's praying that those people, 
those kids and even those people would be saved, but that those kids would read the word of God and find the truth for themselves. Amen? Amen. So we should be praying for that. And we need to do that as well. We know, I believe that, you know, Jesus is real and Jesus is the answer and Christianity is true, but you still need to study the Bible for yourselves. You know, you, because what happens if, you know, what happens if it's not your own conviction? Then if you follow someone into Christianity, like your parents, or your friends, your family, what happens when they turn to something else, like Mormonism or Buddhism or Jehovah's Witness or something like that? What happens? Are you gonna, you're going to be shaken if it's not your conviction, right? You might become disillusioned. You might join them. But that's why we need to make sure our faith isn't someone else's faith. Amen? But these things happen all the time, and maybe some of you have experienced that. I know that I've heard of people in this church where their parents, you know, just all of a sudden change and go to a different religion, and it's crushing, you know. Think about someone you look up to. What if they fall in Christianity? It's crushing, right? But hopefully... You're rooted in Christ. Like that song. What's that song say? It says, the none go with me, still I will what? Follow. Amen. Even if no one in this church follows God, we need to still follow. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I want you to see what you believe about the Holy Spirit. I want to make sure that you don't just go around believing what other people are saying. You know, or people, sometimes people can give the Holy Spirit a bad name, right? They can do crazy things and say, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. And, bl- and that's not right, amen? That's not good. But we, as we go about this study, just ask God to penetrate your heart, to, to just break down all those ill-conceived notions that we've collected in our lifetime. And the verse I have for that is Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and our desires. And we need to be careful because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people study the word of God and then they start m- making up these weird doctrines, right? So we, it needs to be held in the accountability of the church, right? So you guys still come to church and still make sure that you're not a freak, right? <laughs> make sure that people are holding you accountable. But you, you don't just listen to whatever people say. You need to study the word of God too. And that's why, that's why we encourage you to read the Bible because hopefully that's what we're teaching here. Amen? Amen? So you guys remember the Bereans, right, in the Bible? Yeah. The Bereans, they were praised because they questioned the things they were taught. How many of you guys <laughs> like to question things? Yeah? It's good. But sometimes, I'm not saying to do it disrespectfully, okay? <laughs> because how many of you guys have, been, have kind of questioned things disrespectfully? You guys aren't going to admit it. No. <laughs> but I've done that t- at times, you know, just to, just to mess with people. But we should question things because we truly want the truth of God. Amen? And they want to make sure that even what the apostles were teaching was in the scriptures. And it comes from Acts 17 and 11. It says, Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. And think about this. So if think imagine you have never been to church or never knew about Christ, right? And all you had was the New Testament and the Old Testament, or the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? That's all you read. What would your expectations of the Holy Spirit be? It would be pretty amazing, right? But we have, we have dumbed it down. We're like, oh, God doesn't do that anymore. No, but he does. The Acts Church is supposed to be an extension of what we're supposed to live in. Amen? We're not supposed to just say, oh, the Holy Spirit was just for back then. No, it's for today, right? God is with us. So many of you know that if you're a Christian, You've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, right? And we read this in Acts 2.38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of what? The Holy Spirit. Amen. And another important verse, understanding the filling of the Holy Spirit, is John 14.16. It 
It says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. So Jesus was ascending into heaven and he didn't just leave them to just die, right? But he gave them the Holy Spirit, another advocate. And this promises for us believers that the Holy Spirit will come in and dwell us. And it's permanent when we abide in him, right? And how many of you guys are so thankful for the Holy Spirit? Amen? But I believe that we can allow the Holy Spirit to fill us even more. I believe that we have so much more that God wants for us. Amen? Amen. So, I'm not, so to be clear this morning, before we really get into it, I'm not saying to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because hopefully you guys are believers, right? And maybe some of you aren't, but hopefully today, you know, you can give your heart to Christ. But if you're a believer You don't have to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit because hopefully you already have that. You know, it would be silly to seek something that you already have, right? How many of you guys seen people with sunglasses on their head or on their back or something and they're looking for their sunglasses, right? Yeah, Casey does that a lot. (laughs) Yeah, we've done that. But my point today is that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. That's the key, right? Continually, intentionally. And remember Ephesians 5.18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Amen? And the Bible urges us here to seek the, and receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. You guys know what, um, when it says being filled, it says be filled. You guys know what that means, right? I have it on the screen. It says be filled, which is translated in the Greek, You guys can turn to the be filled one. (laughs) But it says, be being filled. And that doesn't really work in English. So you can say, keep on being filled, right? Keep on being filled with the Spirit. And what does that infer? That means that if you, you can deduce from that that the filling of the Holy Spirit is not permanent. You know, we can quickly, you know, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But we still, it doesn't mean that you don't have to be saved again. It's not like, oh, I'm not saved now. But you, we need that constant filling of the Holy Spirit, that fullness of the Holy Spirit. And how many of you guys feel empty sometimes? You know, you start doing things in your own strength. It doesn't mean necessarily that you're not saved, but it means that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit again. And that's why we sing, Lord, I need you, right? Every hour, not just... Not just once a week, but every hour we need the Lord. Amen? And so think about someone uh, someone who's drunk, right? They're saturated under the influence of alcohol. But in the same way, we are to live saturated under the direct influence of the Holy Spirit. And we're not supposed to be filled or flooded with anything else in this world. Because think about it. Is it good to be an alcoholic? No. No. Is it good to be a workaholic? No. You know, it's, it's like, oh, they're a hard worker, but then they overdo it, right? Yeah. And the suffix holic indicates that a person has an abnormal desire for, or they have that abnormal dependence on something, you know, such as alcohol or work, or how many of you guys are dependent on chocolate? <laughs> Chocoholic? No. But, hey. <laughs> but, yeah, there's, but we are not supposed to be dependent on anything but the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. And being dependent on the Holy Spirit, it doesn't affect us negatively. You know, things of this world, when we're dependent on things of this world, it does affect us negatively, but the Holy Spirit doesn't. And why is that? It's because the Holy Spirit produces in us the fruits of the Spirit, which is what? We read in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. You guys know it? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nine things. The fruits of the Spirit. And that's what it produces in us. So that's why it's not bad to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is what we're called to produce. But unfortunately, what happens? Our sin, personal choices, laziness, our fear of man, all these things hinder the filling of the Holy Spirit, which we found in Ephesians 5.18. And it also stalls the flow of the living waters, which we just read about in John chapter 7, verse 38. And then it also can stop that abundant life 
that we're called to live in, which is found in John 10, 10. So I think, I think I already asked this, but how many of you guys want this new year to be different? Amen? 2019, to be different than last year or any other year. And how many of you guys want the filling of the Holy Spirit? Raise your hand if you want the filling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that flowing of the living water of God, that abundant life, that's what we're talking about this morning. And Roman eight, Romans 8, 9 tells us that if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. And so hopefully we're sealed with Christ, right? Amen. But we need to be filled. Amen. And Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 tells us that when we, believe, when we have believed in Christ, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And then that passage continues to go on to say that the Spirit is almost like a deposit or a down payment for what we have in Christ, that eternal inheritance. How many of you guys are excited for that eternal inheritance? Amen? Amen. And it's wonderful, but the Holy Spirit, His activity can be quenched. And it can only be quenched by us, you know. I mean, we can allow things to help quench it, but we have that choice. First Thessalonians 5.19, this is an important one, so write this one down. First Thessalonians 5.19 says, do not quench the spirit. Say that with me. Do not quench the spirit. And so when we allow the quenching of the Holy Spirit, we don't experience the fullness of his working in our lives. We miss out. We're missing out on the power of his flowing. And we're supposed to be vessels of honor, right? And we're not supposed to be all clogged up, but we're, allow, we're supposed to allow the Holy Spirit to flow freely through us and to occupy every part of our lives so that we can be controlled and directed by him because his desires are good, right? His will for us is the best. So we don't have to worry. It's not like he's going to control us to do something evil or bad. He's the only one who can produce good in us. Amen? Amen. So the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> I'm getting it a little wire, but the Holy Spirit doesn't just apply to our outward acts, okay? So think about that. It applies inward too. So the Holy Spirit affects our innermost thoughts. The Holy Spirit affects our desires too. Psalm 19.14 says, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we need to pray for that. That It's not just, we, the Holy Spirit does, doesn't just give us a great outward appearance or make us do good works, but that it changes our heart. It changes our motives. Because you guys can be coming to this church and look good, right? But what's your motive for being here? Is it for someone? Or is it just to get something out of it? Or... Is it for God, right? So we need the Holy Spirit to change our hearts and change our motives. And so I want to see, I want to give you seven things to continue in step with the Holy Spirit. I want to give you things to help stop quenching the Holy Spirit. You guys ready for these? Amen? All right. So first, stop sinning. Would you say that with me? Stop sinning. <laughs> pretty, pretty good one, right? <laughs> And I don't know about you, but I want to be different today, like I said, than I was yesterday. I want to let the fruit of the Spirit be produced in me. And how many of you guys want to live truly submitted to Christ and to the Holy Spirit, right? And when I'm saying submitted to Him, I'm talking about daily submission. I, I think even more than that, right? Like we sing every hour I need you. I think every second, you know, we need Him because how many of you guys have ever been praying and then you come out of that prayer time, and then quickly you get into the flesh. You guys ever experienced that? Yeah. We need the filling of the Holy Spirit constantly. Constantly be praying that. And the first step is to stop sinning. And like Francis Chan said, I don't want to keep crawling when I have the ability to fly, right? And kind of like my dad says, you know, against the enemy, we, it's like, we have so much power in Christ and in the Holy Spirit, but sometimes we're just laying like on a, a 50 cal machine gun, right? We're just like, oh no, it's so hard. We're just crying on it. When we, we, God's given us the weapons. He's given us the things that we need to fight against the enemy, amen? amen. And so Ephesians 4.30 says, it's kind of like 1 Thessalonians, 
But Ephesians 4.30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. How many of you guys fear man? Yeah? I think, yeah, I think everybody does. Only a few people raise their hands, so I don't know. You guys fearing me or something? No. <laughs> but we fear man a lot more than we think. You know, these past few months, God's been revealing so many different ways of how I've, I've feared man. And he's been showing me things also. He doesn't just say, hey, you're fearing man, but he shows you things that you can do to change, right? And to fear him better. And that's what God's been doing with me. And I just, it's crazy. How many of you guys have ever been humbled or things and you're just like, wow, I didn't know I needed that much humbling, right? But, but I think we all do. And it's a shame to say, but most of us worry a lot more about how people will respond to us than we do about how the Holy Spirit will respond to us. Respond to us. We worry about looking strange. We worry about looking different or how our friends, you know, like, oh, we worry, are they going to be mad? Or maybe we're not going to be accepted by them. But how often, if ever, do you consider whether your actions or your lifestyle is grievous to the Holy Spirit? How often do you think about that? And when you look at it that way, when you say, wow, you know, I'm fearing God. I'm fearing, actually, I'm fearing man over God. It's, it's absurd when you think of it, right? But we do it so often. And 1 Thessalonians 5.19, which we read, says what? Do not, what? Quench the Holy Spirit. That's a command, you guys. Amen? That's a command. And my question is, are you concerned about breaking that command? Do you even know what quenching the Holy Spirit means? And maybe you haven't given it much thought. But I encourage you guys to give it thought, you know, and to make sure that you are taking that effort to actually stop sinning. Amen? And so we need to stop sinning. And our second point today says when you do sin, Confess your sin to God. Would you say that with me? Confess your sin to God. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so, in order to be filled, what has to happen? We need to be emptied of all ourself, right? All the wickedness of this world, all the residue. We need to be empty and clean in order to be filled. So we need to confess and maybe you don't want to, you know, some of you might not even want the Holy Spirit because many people still want to be led by their own desires. Many people, you know, that, that idea of giving up control can be terrifying. And if it's terrifying, then you know that you have a lot of flesh in you, right? <laughs> because the flesh is terrified of giving up control to God. But we need to confess. We need to repent of our sin. And then, because what happens if we don't do that? We're going to drive our souls straight to hell. And here's the truth. The Spirit is radical, right? The Spirit led Christ, led Jesus to the cross. And Jesus never promised us a safe or a cutesy tootsy life, right? <laughs> he never promised us a safe life on earth. But here's the thing. The Holy Spirit of God will mold you will shape you into the person that you're meant to be. Amen? Amen? And it can be incredibly painful. So I want to warn you, but I want to encourage you that it's worth it, right? Because, but it's, it's a painful process, especially if we've lived for the flesh because the Holy Spirit's going to strip us of our pride, our selfishness, our fears, right? And how many of you guys have read C.S. Lewis's book, The Voyage of the Dawn Shutter? Yeah? Well, there's a boy. You guys remember the boy named Eustace? Yeah? No? <laughs> but uh, there's a boy named Eustace, and he becomes a dragon. And I, I think it was because of his pride or something. I forget. But in order to become a little boy again, what did he have to undergo? He had to go under intense, you know, ripping of flesh, really. Like, it's kind of a weird picture, but there's... He had to tear the dragon skin off, and it hurt, but that was the only way that he could be transformed back into a boy. And it's, it's a good picture, right? 
It's a good picture for us in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit needs to strip us of our flesh and sometimes it needs to rip. Sometimes it needs to tear off the things to, in order to set us free. And the Holy Spirit, it's not like the Holy Spirit's there to just try to hurt you, right? That's not true. The Holy Spirit is there to make you like Christ. Amen? Christ-like. That's what we are Christians, right? What does that mean? Little Christ. We're supposed to follow in his ways, and that's what the Holy Spirit wants to make us. And it, again, don't be afraid because it's going to be worth it. Amen? So the third point is to seek to live every moment in God's kingdom. So would you say that with me? Seek to live every moment in God's kingdom. And seek his righteousness, Matthew 5, 6. I love this. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen? And we want to be filled, right? We were talking about the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit. So hunger and thirst for that. Like I said, seek to live every moment in the kingdom of God. And if we read on in the next chapter, Matthew 6, many of you guys have memorized this, right? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Amen? And I love what A.W. Tozer said. I feel like I'm just, uh, just quoting Francis Chan and A.W. Tozer today. <laughs> but uh, he said, every man is just as spiritual as he wants to be. Right? Think about that. You can be as close to God as you want to be. You know, think about the disciples. Why was Peter the closest? Was it because God favored Peter? No, it's because Peter wanted to be close, right? And we, we have to want it. You know, it's, God doesn't show favoritism. And if you think he does, then you're never going to be close to him, right? So draw close to him and know that he's not going to push you away. Amen? And we want to believe sometimes um, I, I think we want to believe that we're people who desire truth, right? And hopefully we are, but sometimes we, we try to say, oh yeah, I desire truth, like over acceptance, over friends and things. But the chances are that we care more about people's opinions than we're willing to admit. And we're not supposed to focus on our little sandcastles here on earth, right? Like when I think of people trying to be successful in this, on this world, on this earth, I feel like it's just them building sandcastles that are just going to be wrecked, right? But they put so much time and effort into those things. But we are to seek first, what? The kingdom of God, amen? And his kingdom will stand for all eternity. It's not a sandcastle that's just going to crumble. But our feeble kingdoms, they're going to be destroyed. So don't build up your kingdom here on earth. And don't be led by your desires to build your earthly kingdom. Instead, let the Holy Spirit teach you how to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So fourth, fourth thing is make every effort to respond rightly when the Holy Spirit speaks. They're getting longer, so you guys got to be better readers this time. Ready? You ready to say it with me? Make every effort to respond rightly when the Holy Spirit speaks. Amen? When the Holy Spirit speaks, or when the Holy Spirit gives us that nudge, we are supposed to obey. Amen? And don't just think about it. Don't just memorize it or study it. You know, like I've been uh, mentioning Francis Chan a lot, and he had another good analogy. You know, I've just been watching, what, like listening to what he's been saying about the Holy Spirit, but he had this analogy. He's saying, what if you told your kid to clean their room, right? How many of you guys have to tell your kids to clean their room? Probably all of you. Well, if you have kids. But, uh, but what if you told your kid to clean their room? And they said, okay. And then they came to you the next day saying, I remembered what you said. You know, I, I studied it. I memorized it. I even had, had a little study with my friends about it. You know, I, I, I planned on how to do it. Would you be happy with that response if they didn't clean their room? No, right? Because you told them to clean it, and they didn't obey you. But many times we do that. You know, we think, oh, I can tell my kids what to do, but God can't tell you what to do? That's, that's stupid, right? But many times we do that, and the Holy Spirit tells us to do something. And if the Holy Spirit does, we're not supposed to just take that as a suggestion. 
We're supposed to take that as a command from God. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, do not quench the spirit, and that is a command from God. And, but if, if we're just saying, oh, I'm just going to study what the Holy Spirit told me, or I'm just going to talk about it, that's quenching the Holy Spirit, you guys. And when I think of quenching the Holy Spirit, maybe some of you guys don't understand what that means. But I kind of picture it as the Holy Spirit is like a fire within you, you know. This is just how my m- mind imagines it. And quenching the Holy Spirit is almost like us just trying to extinguish that fire, just trying to put that out. And we're not supposed to do that, amen? So by the grace and strength of God, I pray that we can go as far as never quenching his voice. And we are going to quench his voice because we're sinners and sinning quenches the Holy Spirit, but I pray that we can sin less today than we did yesterday, right? And just continue. Luke 14, 33 says, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. And like I said earlier, that's not a QTTT message either. That give up everything? How does your flesh feel about that? Pretty good? No. Your flesh hates that. It's torture to the flesh. But we're, what does the Bible tell us to do to our flesh? Crucify. Crucify the flesh. Amen? And we're supposed to do that. And before that, in Luke 9, 24, we read, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. Yeah. So the, key, the thing here is don't hang on to your life. Give your life to God and let the Holy Spirit lead it. So number five, this one, this one isn't as long. So it says, pray to have a thriving relationship with Christ. Would you say that with me? Pray to have a thriving relationship with Christ. And pray for that fervently, right, with a passion. You must want that relationship with God at any price. Not just the relationship like, hey, hey, God, thanks for saving me, high five. No, but a thriving relationship, one you know, that's what, we, that's what we're called to do, to know God. And that's the best thing that we can ask for. So pray to be a godly man or woman of God. Amen? Amen. And not, you know, just for you men to be a godly ma- man and for you women to be a godly woman. Don't mix those up, okay? <laughs> so First John 2, 12 through 14 says, I am writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Verse 14, I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. So, I pray this for our church, amen? Hopefully you guys do too, that we are forgiven by God, amen? We have been forgiven and that we can overcome the evil one and that we know the Father and that the word of God lives in us, amen? So our sixth point is ask God to pour out his spirit in your life so that you might receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. So that one's long, right? You guys ready for this? On three, one, two, three. Ask God to pour out his spirit into your life so that you might receive the filling of the spirit. Amen. And when you ask, you know, you're in the great position to receive, right? When you ask, you're in that great position to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit, to experience those living waters that we read about, to experience that abundant life. And so asking for a spirit to be poured out upon you it's according to his will, right? So John 14, 13 through 14 says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And then in Matthew two seventeen, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and old men will dream dreams. I must be old because I dream dreams. <laughs> but seventh, so the seventh one is leave the results up to God and enjoy the experience of walking hand in hand 
with Jesus. I told you they get longer and longer every time. <laughs> but why don't you read that with me? Leave the results up to God and enjoy the experience of walking hand in hand with Jesus. Amen? And as citizens of the kingdom of God or as children of God, we're called to live in a way that reflects the reality of the kingdom of God. But sometimes we get entangled, right? Because some of you, including me, I'm not just throwing you guys under the bus, but all of us, we can get overly concerned about our appearance or about our spiritual reputation or about our coolness, our acceptance. But when we do this, we're living as citizens of this world rather than citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And what does the Bible call us to be? Ambassadors, right? What's an ambassador to do? They represent something, right? Like an ambassador for the U.S. represents the U.S. And hopefully, we're representing Christ to people in, uh, in the right way, right? That we're not giving Christ or, or giving Jesus a bad name. Amen? Amen. So be ambassadors of Christ. And we're going to struggle. We're going to struggle to maintain our true allegiance to Christ. But hopefully, by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit allows us to be stronger. It's not the things of this world, the world's going to get harder. Things aren't going to get easier, but hopefully the Holy Spirit's going to make us stronger, right, and fill us. And so we need to keep fighting till the end, and we must finish the race like the Bible says. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. All sin. So we need to walk in the light. So I want to ask you a few questions. These are just rhetorical, of course. But I'm just going to kind of machine gun them at you. So, so where does your allegiance lie? Think about that. Are you led primarily by the spirit or by the flesh? Do you care about what people think when they see you? Or do you care about seeking the truth concerning the Spirit of God? And then do you care about living in the light of that truth and enjoying that relationship with the Father by walking in the Spirit? And I pray that we're allowing the Holy Spirit of God to live within us. Amen? And if that's true, like if we truly believe that we are temples of Christ and that we have the Holy Spirit of God, then there should be a huge difference between us and the world, right? Yes. Amen. There should be a huge difference. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God is filling us. And many times we look like the world because we're not constantly being filled with Christ or with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, some of us, some of you have been hardened by the Holy Spirit. Maybe you just think of it as a two-letter, or two, not a two-letter word, but, you know, two words. But it's frustrating to see that people don't take the Holy Spirit seriously anymore. And for pastors and leaders, it could be very disappointing to see the fruitlessness in people's lives, their spiritual lives. And I'm reminded of James you know, remember his frustration? Like, he was talking about um, the salt water and the fresh water. You guys remember that? In James 3.11, he says, Does a spring pour forth, the same, forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? And basically, James is saying that there's people who are calling themselves Christians, nominal Christians, you know. What's well, a nominal Christian? It's a person who just claims to be a Christian or is just a Christian by name. But we should be much more than that. Christ should run much deeper through us than just a name. Amen? Amen. And so you see, you see how he's just, James is just crying. He says, the, in the verse before that, in James 3.10, he says, My brothers, these things ought to not be so. And you and I have received the Holy Spirit, but... I, I, char I charge you with, you know, just be filled with the Holy Spirit because I don't think that we're being constantly filled like we should. Too often we lack love, you know, joy. We lack the fruits of the Spirit too often. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, all these things. You know, sometimes it's sad. How many of you guys have seen a Christian 
and then a non-believer, and you've seen a non-believer, you know, someone who claims Christ, yet you've seen a non-believer exhibit more of these fruits of the Spirit than the believer. Yeah, it's sad. And these ought not be so, like James said, amen? And just like Francis Chan, like when he was advising those Jehovah's Witnesses, we need to be, you know, just we need to begin afresh. Hopefully this new year we can begin afresh by re-examining what we truly believe about the Holy Spirit. And maybe you just, um, maybe you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna stick to the word. I don't need the Holy Spirit. And maybe you've rejected the Holy Spirit because people have given the Holy Spirit a bad name. But I pray that we don't go to, from one extreme to the other, but that we have that balance. And so that this new year that we're truly studying the word of God. Amen. And the truth is, how many of you guys know that people can fill a room, right? We can get the best musicians up here. We can get the best speakers up here and fill the room to overflowing. But if we don't have the Holy Spirit leading us, if we don't have the Holy Spirit guiding us, then it's going to all be worth this, right? And I pray like I prayed earlier that, I pray that you're not here for people. I pray, by the grace of God, it, we do have people who are full of love, right? And I pray that you are blessed by that. I pray that you do come here partly to be encouraged and to be built up. But I pray that primarily it's for Christ, right? It's not because people, it's not because amenities or the music or the speaker or anything. Because if it is, then we're missing out on the Holy Spirit, right? So ask yourself this. Why do you desire the Holy Spirit? And do you want to experience more of the Holy Spirit for your own benefit or so that you can benefit, you know, the kingdom of heaven? And if you answer yes to, you know, for your own benefit, then you're acting just like Simon the Magician. How many of you guys remember the story about Simon the Magician, yeah? He wanted to buy the Holy Spirit's power from the apostles. And what did Peter say? In Acts 8.20, Peter firmly said, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. And we need to want the Holy Spirit for the right reasons, not for our own benefit, just to be powerful. But look at Paul. He wanted to go to heaven, right? But he also knew that the Holy Spirit had so much more for him to give to the churches, and that's why he continued. And that's, that's why he wanted the Holy Spirit, right? And that's how our motive should be. It should be for the kingdom of heaven. So again, why do you seek the Spirit? Do you, don't pursue the Spirit just for power. Don't pursue miracles and things like that over God. I mean, it's, it's kind of like how people worship creation rather than the Creator, and that's, it's wrong. But we need to make sure that we're not doing that either with the Holy Spirit. And here's something special for you guys all here today, for all of you, because each one of you is called to, to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Think about that. Each one of us in here is called to be filled and led by the Holy Spirit of God. Do you guys understand what that means? and how powerful that is, and how heavy that is. But if you're not submitting, if you're not totally trusting the Holy Spirit, then it means that you're not tr totally trusting and submitting to God either, because the Holy Spirit and God are one. And I pray that you want to submit to the Holy Spirit's power. I pray this over you, Galatians 5.16. And that's kind of, a lot of the verses today I just kind of put, um, a summary, not a summary, but just kind of a paraphrase of it. But this one's kind of close. It says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're talking about. We need to walk by the Spirit because we don't want to gratify the desires of the flesh. We don't want to just continue going back to our old ways and doing the old things. Don't try to live this Christian life without Christ. What do, you, what do you have if you ha don't have Christ in Christian? You have Ian. We don't need Ian. We need Christ, right? <laughs> but don't live that empty, Americanized Christianity. Don't make your lives so comfortable, like I said, that you don't need the comforter. And I've realized that in my life. I realized that I try to make my life so comfortable. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with just 
you know, enjoying what God's given you. But if we're just making our lives so comfortable that we're forgetting to do the work of the ministry or the work of Christ, then we're missing out, right? So I want to end with this verse. It's in the same chapter of Galatians. Uh, Galatians 5.25 it says, If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. We need to keep in step. What happens if you just, if you stand still? Then you go nowhere, right? What happens if you're not filled with the Spirit? Then you're not keeping in step with the Spirit. And so that's my prayer for this morning, that we are filled and that we continue to be filled all the way into eternity. Amen? Amen. So remember that. Just This is a new year. We're almost a week in. Tomorrow is the 7th, right? So we're almost a week in. So I encourage you guys to not go any further without being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. And God, we're so sorry for the ways that we've grieved your Holy Spirit, God, that we've quenched the Spirit. Lord, just, I just think of all the things that I've done. Uh, and I'm so sorry, God, for the things I've taken so lightly, the things I thought, oh, those are, that's just a little sin, or that doesn't really matter. Lord, I'm sorry, God. And, and we're, I just pray that you'll forgive us for the times that you've told us to do something, but we just ignored you, or we tried to... Uh, we tried to just do something else and say, oh, God, is this okay? But no, when you tell us to do something, I pray that we would do it, God. I just pray that for any person who maybe hasn't heard the Holy Spirit recently, I just pray that you would just reveal to them the last thing that you've told them and that they would do it today, that they would do it as soon as they can, God. And God, I just pray that we would uh, just be open to you, listening to you, I just pray, Father, that you would just continue to work the truth of your word into our hearts, God, because we don't want to just be led by what people say. We don't want to just be spiritual babies, but we we want the meat of your word, God. We want to grow up. We want to mature, and we don't want to make excuses anymore. We want to know that, God, there's no excuse. There's no excuse not to be close to you. Uh, yes, this world's going to be hard and there's going to be things in this world that are going to try to tempt us, but that's no excuse for not serving you. And so I just pray that you would just give your people a fresh passion, God, that you would just fill them with the fire of your Holy Spirit, God, and just burn out everything that's not of you, God. Burn out everything of their flesh and their desires. I just pray that you'll fill them with your Holy Spirit right now. And we love you, Father, and we're so grateful for what you've done. And we're so thankful and so excited to see what you're going to do, God, and what you're doing right now. And we bless your holy name. It's in Jesus' my name I pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 All right, so we're going to be taking communion. And I encourage you guys just to get right with God, you know. Just think of the ways that you've grieved the Holy Spirit and confess, and repent of those things before we enter into this time of worship and remembrance of what Christ has done for us. Amen? So ushers, you guys may hand out the elements.